Aside from the cooling system, I believe I have everything hooked up right now. Um, so I've turned the fuel on, I'm getting ready to attach my timing light so I can check my timing. And then I'll climb up there and see if this thing will start. get far with the advance because it doesn't want to even shine a light on there. It's not getting enough of a signal, which is something I've had happen for some reason sometimes. Well, maybe I can tweak it, get it in just the right spot. Oh, oh no, maybe. Come on. So I've got it set about 2,000 RPM, which is where I want to check. Um, looks like it's advanced beyond 20 from here. Best guess would be probably something like 27 degrees. There's 27 degrees on the gun. And there's what it looks like. So that's probably about 27. So I've got to shut it down and then back that timing off a little bit. So I got a little ambitious when I first installed the uh, stator and advanced it, so I basically just got to hopefully loosen it without having to take the flywheel off. Rotate it a little that way clockwise and take some of the advance out of it and try again. This stator is very snug against the case, which isn't always a bad thing, but it's not great when you're trying to adjust it just to get it to rotate a little bit. Yeah. There. That's probably still too far, but I'm going to try it once it has a minute to cool down with a fan on it. I didn't move it nearly enough that time. That was still about 24 to 25 degrees of advance, so I gotta back it off more than that. Doesn't look lined up from the camera right now, but uh, that's about 23 degrees. That is basically back to a stock setting right now. It still looks weird from the camera view, but from where I sit to adjust it, that's pretty much right on the uh, 20 degree timing there. So that's about as close as I'm going to worry about getting it. If it's a half a degree off, it's uh, good enough because I think with my ignition system here, I'm probably so far off of what they want anyway that we'll just call this close enough for a start and we'll have to see where it gets us. So now I'll be able to install my uh, water pump and the cover up there, get all my hoses on, fill it up with coolant, all that stuff to kind of finalize this uh, engine install. Looks like I'm going to have to trim a little bit off of this corner here because the uh, TPR cylinder where it cools all the way around the exhaust port is a little larger there and this actually runs into it I think. Took a little bit off there. Try again. The other thing I just realized is that I've got a fourth hole up here in the corner for my uh, cover and I didn't drill this engine case for that hole but I'm not going to do it with it in the scooter. I can drill it and tap it sometimes it's out.
seat won't fit because the carburetor is too big. I forgot how much fun these uh, larger carburetors are to deal with when you try to keep sort of stock uh, layouts. But I think I can loosen up my rubber boot here on the intake and probably get the carburetor to move just a little bit. Here's what I'm actually looking at, my issue. If you can see there, the uh, throttle adapter from the carburetor comes up and the throttle cable and just runs into the seat there. Uh, it's not awful now. It's not hanging up the cable or anything like that, but I think I'm gonna take this back off in the front and put a couple more washers under there just to space it up a little more so it's free. Well, I actually took the time to make up a couple of spacers on the lathe and then when I looked at it I realized that the seat makes contact all the way across this bar and I am a heavy rider so I thought it made more sense to make an entire uh, bar type spacer that goes all the way across so my seat will still make contact all the way across there. And that's a quarter inch thick uh, flat bar. Aluminum. confident that this thing is actually going to move very well under its own power between the carburetor tune and the uh, CVT tune, the heavy sliders in there. Who knows how it matches up with all the crap I've got on here that it's not really meant for. So before I even try to take it out on the road, I'm going to go ahead and just take it around my yard real quick to make sure it actually will move. stand corrected I had a 122 in there for some reason I was thinking 125 I'm gonna drop that down to a 115 since I don't seem to have a 118 change, lean it out a little bit more. Wow. Okay. So I've just barely touched 9,000 RPM. Um, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and change the main jack, go a little bit smaller on that. Try again. Well, that still 
seems like it needs a lot of work, but maybe I can at least get it down the road enough to get it hot. Um, hopefully not piston mounting hot, but what I'm hoping to do is get it hot enough to uh, give it a good heat cycle, let it cool for a while, and then check torque on things, uh, get some more gear on. So, the fan is coming on for some reason. I think my temperature switch has gone crazy because my fan keeps coming on and I've got 114 on coolant temp and 141 on cylinder head. What that's about. that I recall seeing for the cylinder head temperature was 186 Fahrenheit um, so it's really not getting that hot but that's gonna have to be hot enough uh, I guess for my first heat cycle I usually like to get them hot with an actual ride and then I'll let them cool overnight or at least for a few hours and then I'll just recheck some fasteners like the uh, cylinder studs exhaust stuff like that and just make sure nothing's loosening up so that's where I'm going to quit for today. So for the cylinder studs, what I've done is I've set my torque wrench to roughly 12.5 newton meters, which is the same spec that I initially torqued them to. And then I'll just go over each nut here and see if it still clicks. Um, what I actually like as a proper retorque to me would be to back off each stud one at a time, each nut one at a time, and then retorque it to spec. But I've been kind of afraid to do that with a liquid cooled setups. I started out doing it, and on one of them, I noticed that I had steam after I had done that. And so I thought maybe that takes too much of the clamping force off, even having one nut at a time backed off, um, since we only have four studs here. It's like automotive applications and larger motorcycles and stuff, you might have an array of uh, cylinder studs or bolts. And here we've only got four, so I've just been sticking to just making sure it at least clicks the uh, initial torque value. A little bit of movement there. movement there. A little bit there. A little there. I'll just go over them one more time to make sure. Yeah. So I know a lot of people don't think that that retorque is necessary and it may not be but uh, to me, anytime I'm using a base gasket that is compressible, then I like to do that because I usually find that after it's been hot, after it's heat cycled at least once, that I'll get a little bit of movement in each of the nuts. So I just prefer to go ahead and do that and make sure nothing is loosening up too much. And other than that, um, I'm just I usually go over a definite is the header flange bolts because those uh, loosen up pretty commonly, and then you can just go over 
whatever other bolts that you think are uh, critical to make sure nothing loosens up after your first heat cycle. While it's up on the bench, I'm going to go ahead and switch this main jet out from a 112 down to a 108. Um, partially because I don't have a 110 apparently, and partially because if it is sputtering at wide open throttle, then it needs a bit of a step to be a good tune, even though I really hate taking too much of a step at one time because I'm uh, paranoid about this aluminum cylinder since I'm really not used to these things and know how quickly they can uh, melt a piston. get that to jump up to 8,000 instead of roughly 7, I might be in business. So generally the clutch seems like a pretty obvious choice when you want to get the RPM up off the line, but being a stock clutch with just light modifications, my variator, the overrange variator especially, seems to do a lot of work at getting the RPM up for this transmission setup. So I'm actually going to try lighter weights. I've got uh, three eight and a half gram weights here. I'm going to mix those with three of the 10 gram weights that are in there, and that'll average out to 9.25 grams average weight. And I'm pretty sure it should help it off the line. My main question is I don't know how high this engine wants to rev, so we're just going to have to try it and see. swap out the eight and a half gram weights in here with seven gram weights uh, that'll average out to eight and a half with the three tens the reason I'm not just using all eight and a halves is because I can't find the other three eight and a half gram weights <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
going to try going a little bit lighter still. Um, so these are three 7 gram rollers. And then I've just got done making up some inserts. And these are 7 gram rollers with 2 gram aluminum inserts that I made on the lathe. Um, and also I've got a selection of inserts here for different weights. So that would take them all the way to 12, that would take them to 11. Those are from when I was working on the 103. Um, but while I was doing this, I just wanted to make a quick note uh, on my modding rollers uh, video, rollers or sliders. I get a lot of comments about how stupid I am for modifying these things because they're so dirt cheap. Well, number one, the 19 by 15 uh, sliders are at least $20 for every set. And that much aluminum is like a couple bucks if you can make them in a lathe yourself like I can. Aluminum foil costs next to nothing. Like today, I was kind of in a pinch. I just needed something to work with. So I made them up and I'm working again, trying more stuff instead of sitting around waiting for somebody to deliver stuff to me. So maybe those Brainiacs never run into the uh, issues that I do. But for somebody that does a lot of tuning, a lot of work on their own, and doesn't want to spend a fortune on just a slide or a roller collection, I still think that's a uh, very good mod. Stuff like aluminum inserts, aluminum foil, whatever the case may be. But at any rate, uh, these will average out to 8 grams. I've got 3 7 gram and 3 9 gram, so they will average out to 8 grams. So I went down from nine, from ten to nine and a quarter to eight and a half, and now eight. And I should say, I didn't expect to get this far. I really thought it would probably stop pulling. I thought it would rev higher than this, and probably then stop pulling. But it's only got up to near eleven thousand so far, um, which is probably about where I think it's going to quit. But we'll find out. seven grams are the lightest sliders that I have without spending a bunch of time to try and get the uh, inserts pressed out of here and make new inserts for those. About the only thing I can do is work with the Molosi uh, rollers that came with a kit and the heaviest rollers they have are 3.8 gram. I'm gonna mix those with these seven gram sliders and that will average out to uh, what 5.4 grams um, weight and that's a pretty big step so I just figure that way I'll kind of find out uh, for sure where the limits are or at least I'll come a lot closer to finding out if nothing else <laughs> Just 
leave it like this. And then it's on its face immediately after. The one thing you won't get on the video is when I try to hold it open, you just feel all this vibration that I don't normally get. Once it starts to get high up and rev, but I'm not liking that much. are getting so worn from uh, yeah from running out of oil those things are see that not good so this is probably really the smartest thing i could possibly do all right so i went in the house and i took my runs off the gopro and carefully timed my acceleration uh from any of the weights that i've actually done zero to whatever acceleration runs with in my test runs um, so I did them with 5.4 gram, 7 gram, and 8 gram weights. Uh, I did 0 to 30, 0 to 40, and 0 to 50. That way I'd have a good idea of what was happening um, at any point. And the 5.4 gram, you saw the video, they clearly are not what works. Um, they maxed out at 12,050 RPM at 46 miles per hour. Um, and I let off because the thing was just shaking enough and it wasn't pulling so I didn't see the point of uh, abusing it that much. So as far as 0 to 30 mile per hour times, 7 and 8 gram are pretty much right on top of each other um, and the 5.4 gram are way out. It's just not going to work. The 7 gram weights are running out of the power band um, by the time they're getting near 50 miles per hour where the 8 gram is staying near the power band all the way up through there. So if the 8 gram is pretty much on par with the 7 gram, 0 to 30 and 0 to 40, and it beats at 0 to 50, then for right now, I'm going to put the 8 gram back in there. Um, there's more fine tuning that could be done, but I'm not going to worry about it yet because I think I want to do some work to the clutch before I uh, get any further. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and put the 8 gram weights back in the CVT.